All right, folks, welcome back. Now we're talking about algorithms and properties and how to express these. So here are some facts, but they're really cool, and so we'll, we'll get into each one of these. Um, did you know that algorithms can be combined? So here's an algorithm to do some kind of a search. Here's an algorithm to do some kind of a finding, and I can combine the search with the find. Here's a search, and here's a conquer. I can put them together to make a new algorithm. So you can combine algorithms. Once you have these little building blocks, you actually combine them to build even more powerful ideas, which is neat. Um, that also hits on the third point, which is that knowledge of standard algorithms can really help you in your in your productivity. So if you kind of know what the tools are, I think of algorithms in some sense as the tools on a tool belt. Right? If you look at a master carpenter, they have all these 20 tools, and I have no idea how half of them do, but they do, and they know exactly what, when to pull out a particular tool. Algorithms are like that. Okay? You pull out exactly the right tool at the right time, and you can build on other things. really powerful. Um, here's the important part. If you're building pieces, building a larger algorithm out of smaller algorithms, it's important to ensure the overall algorithm is correct, it'd be really useful if the pieces that you're building out of were themselves correct. Okay? So if you can prove that these 10 pieces I'm going to be building, this much larger, more powerful algorithm, those were correct, the little small, small parts of the problem, then building them together just means that I reassemble them correctly, then I did, okay, then I'm, it's easy to prove correctness for that, which I told, mentioned earlier was very hard to do. Um, how about this? Different algorithms can be invented to solve the same problem. Here's an interesting idea, which is, how about the problem of, all right, I've got to take two num one number and double it. So I'm trying to write a function, and how, what algorithm, you're going to give me a number, I'm going to now return the double of that number. I can do it many ways. I could take the number and add it to itself. I could take the number and multiply it times two. I could take the number and multiply it times four, and then later divide by two. I can take the number and add, if they're integers and positive integers, let's say it's 10 and 10, I can take the original number, 10, and then add one to it 10 times, that number times. So there's three or four different ways to do the exact same thing. And some of them have different, um, they're all correct, but some of them have different performance characteristics. Some of them might be more easy to read. So sometimes you're making a decision of how you do a particular thing based on different parameters. And that's important. And when you, it's an important thing for designers to do as they're making up new algorithms. And finally, here's a cool thing. Sometimes you have a problem and you can't solve it. And developing a new algorithm to solve it can yield insight. So I had this, this nut I couldn't crack. It was, you know, it was really hard to do. It was really hard to, oh, we recently had, how about this? We had recently had rock climbers climb this amazing face of Yosemite, almost a sheer face. And they recently did this. So this was a face that was known to be, boy, the hardest face ever, the hardest rock climbing um, rock almost of all time. And these two climbers just scaled it. So they came up with an algorithm of the path and how you wait and how you dust off and to, to make that traversal correct. That yielded some insights on the rock. Wait, oh, that might mean I use a technique lower up here. Oh, little, that might mean that these are the same kind of rock. You can have insights on particularly the problem based on the new algorithm that's used to solve that. So it's kind of a powerful thing. How do you express algorithms? This is my, this is my favorite little example. So the programmer's spouse says, Run to the store, pick up a loaf of bread. If they have eggs, get a dozen. OK? And the person returns with 12 loaves of bread. I'll wait. I'll, I'll wait for the reaction there. You see? See? What do they mean? They meant 12 eggs, right? A dozen eggs. If they meant eggs, they said, you know, eggs, get a dozen. Doesn't refer to the guy you just recently talked about. No. But loaves were out there hanging as a possible what they meant, right? Pick a loaf of bread if you have eggs, get a dozen of the earlier thing I mentioned. So this is ambiguous. Language is often ambiguous. But when we're talking about algorithms, we can't afford to have things be ambiguous. I'm going to specify some algorithm, hand it to a coder. That coder may, can't have that mistake that you just saw in that example. That can't happen. This could be life or death. So we have to come up with really clear, concrete examples to be able to specify algorithms. And I encourage all the high school teachers out there to run the Peter Butter and Jelly experiment, which is you ask your students to give them an algorithm for making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I guess you can't use peanut butter because of all the allergies, but sesame butter, or some kind of a non-allergic buttery thing. Butter and jelly. OK, you make a butter and jelly. It's probably just those dairy. OK, so the point is you get the sandwich together. And then the students have this list, right? And then what happens is you see how ambiguous those are. And you try to then mess up making the butter and jelly sandwich based on, they say, oh, put the jelly on top of the bread. You take the jar of jelly and go, whomp, and you smash the bread. So I encourage all of you out there to play with the peanut butter and jelly experiment. It's really very fun.